Hello and welcome back to Tales of Arise. You guys ready to enter the Forbidden Zone? Let's go. Soon, we might very well learn the truth behind Shion's thorns, as well as my own past. I have to be ready to face anything. But whatever happens. The only way is forward. I'm determined to save Shion and Dana. Nothing I learned can change that. From what I know of Tales of Games, or from what I've experienced in the past, this means this is now the last area in the game that is part of the main storyline. So, we're gonna go through whatever is behind here. We're gonna beat the end boss, and then we'll arrive just outside of here again, and we can then continue doing side quests and leveling up, doing the arena and stuff like that. Let's see if that is the case here as well. Transfer. All right. Let's see. I mean, there's other stuff over there. Hold up, you guys. Okay. What is it? I want to look through that room over there. I'm curious what we'll find. That's the room you visited in your past, right? Sure. We can check it out. Okay. This looks like some kind of research facility. A laboratory secreted away in the Forbidden Zone. Why am I past being surprised at this point? Looks pretty deserted. Let's check it out. It might give us a new lead. For the people of Lenegas, the Forbidden Zone is the stuff of dreams. Yet here I am, standing within its hallowed halls. It's off limits even for lords, then? Talk about an exclusive club. Being exclusive is one thing, but how many important facilities let in only the Sovereign? Doesn't that seem a little strange? Strange doesn't cover it. If it was only one room, maybe. But a place on this scale? How do they keep it from falling into ruin? Whoever the Sovereign is, they can't manage the upkeep of this whole place themselves. Did no one ever talk about it when you were growing up? No, not that I can remember. Then again, Sovereigns and Forbidden Zones weren't exactly breakfast table conversations. The Forbidden Zone is a hallowed place, at one with the Sovereign's authority. Grounds of the one true ruler who presides over all Renans. That is what we believed this place to be. No, what we were made to believe it was. But now, it is finally time to discover this area's true purpose, and why it was kept hidden behind the scenes for so long. Okay, we've got a pretty clear location there in the middle. Just want to see if there's maybe any chests around here. I doubt it. Never know. Okay, I can move past. It's back here. It's showing Lenigus structures. You can see pipes for transporting astral energy sticking out of them. Okay. It's showing this room's equipment. It hasn't been used in a long time. And... A notice? This area will now be shut down as the project proceeds to the final phase. Okay. It's equipment for storing human bodies. Whether it held li living or dead ones, they're all empty now. Hmm. I think I can make this work. Well, can you make head or tail of it? These are experiment records, by the looks of it. Reams of them, dating back hundreds of years. Let's see. A composite being capable of controlling Danon astral energy, so as to convert its molecular and elemental makeup. 
The creation of a governing central figure taking the form of a Danon. Codename Sovereign. Sovereign? Wait, there's more. Research into utilizing force field crystals for the purpose of stable astral energy containment. That must be the master course. With all this raw data, there's bound to be records here somewhere about the Maiden and the Lords, too. About the Lords? Why would they be on there? Think about it. The Lord's crests are clearly of a piece with those of both the Sovereign and the Maiden. Not to mention the fact that the contenders to the Crown are selected from otherwise regular Renan citizens. In other words, it may be that all Renans are unwittingly being made subject to some kind of... grand scheme. What about the Sovereign? Does it say anything else? Where do I start? All I've read so far is the headlines. There's so much here. To sift through all of it would require specialized... Wait. What is it? Did you find something? It's a list of names. With the title, Test Subjects, Sovereign. It's your call. Read it. There must be dozens of test subjects listed here. Hundreds, even. All of them failures. Wait. I think I've found one that was successful. Alfin. Test subject number 1273. Ethnicity, N.A. Unique adjustment index, generation, N.A. Given name, Alfin. There you go. <sighs> Why are you so shocked? That was obvious. They re-engineered me. Right here in this lab. Alfin. It's fine, really. What about the others? Was I the only one? Test subject number 10105. Ethnicity, N.A. Unique adjustment index, generation, N.A. Given name, Volron. Volron? But that means... She's only sovereign because someone made him that way, too. That's interesting. He's the last one. In three centuries worth of records, you and Volron are the only two subjects on whom the experiment was a success. <laughs> but what about the winners of the crown contests? Does this mean that none of them were ever crowned sovereign after all? Upon victory, the Sovereign shall return to Rena and rule over Rena and Lenegus combined. When a new Sovereign is decided, the outgoing Monarch shall relinquish their post and live out the rest of their days on Rena. So we were told. But according to these records, there have only ever been two Sovereigns, neither of whom had anything to do with the Crown Contest. It's all lies, including the part about the Sovereign residing in Rena. The Crown Contest was never about deciding a new ruler. It must always have been devised for some other purpose. But even supposing that's true, someone must have been in charge for the past three centuries, right? If it wasn't the Sovereign, then who was it? Crown Contests have been held this whole time, in spite of the fact that there was already a Sovereign. Me. Meaning that for the past 300 years, Someone out there has to have been maintaining that lie. The same person I'm willing to bet is behind all this. The Red Woman? It's possible. But that doesn't necessarily mean she's the mastermind behind this scheme. She could be working for someone else. Someone back on the Renan homeworld. Either way... It's fair to say she's definitely involved somehow. What about the data records? Is there no other information that could help us? Not that I can see. Just file upon file of experiment results. There's nothing here about who's behind all this, or what their endgame is, unfortunately. 
I've barely managed to scratch the surface, mind you. You won't be able to read through it all, but you're welcome to take a look through what you can, while we're here. I'll do that. So this is where Alfin became the Sovereign, and Volron as well. The significance of this location would suggest... Hey! It looks like the terminals in here turned on too! We should look through them. They might contain valuable information. Only two Sovereigns, in over 300 years. So why has the experiment only succeeded twice in all this time? And if that's the case, why keep on doing it? Was there really no other way? Or could there be some other reason? Dohalim. <laughs> Forgive me. Alfin. <sighs> I'm fine. I'm just a little shaken, that's all. I knew what I was already, so it's not like it's a surprise or anything. But it's strange. I've got all this rage inside of me, but I don't even know who it's for. I'm scared that I'll put a face to it. Just to have someone to blame. If that were to happen, then I... No. Then we'd help you fight it. Before you ever got that far. <sighs> Wouldn't we, everyone? Yeah. We wouldn't just sit by and watch you spiral out of control. That's right. No good can come from being consumed by hatred. If you ever start to lose your way, you can count on us to guide you back. To remind you where home is. And I would be happy to lend an attentive ear, should you ever have need. <sighs> Thank you, everyone. I think I'll be okay now. Right, you did say something about terminals now being accessible in here. Not sure what exactly he was talking about there. It doesn't really look... Oh, there's something here I can look at. An operating table. Many subjects undoubtedly never came back alive from their operations on this. Yep. Select a topic to explore. The Sovereign. The Sovereign acts as Lenigus' central control device for the Spirit Channeling Ceremony. Each one is granted level 2 authority and an ID crest. A Danon subject serves as the base of its creation. Inferior ideal candidate possess equal affinity for every astral element. However, such aptitude is statistically rare to uncover within real world conditions. As a result, most subjects die during the adjustment period and stability is still not guaranteed for those who survive it. This instability, coupled with the Sovereign's powers of astral manipulation, pose a high risk to the security of Lenigus if left unchecked. As such, Stabilization measures must be put in place via the support mechanism when utilizing the Sovereign in the Spirit Channeling Ceremony. Addendum 1. No effective alternate methods to perform the ceremony have been found. Trials on Denon subjects are authorized to continue. Addendum 2. Unit 2 adjustments are a success. Subsequent adjustments are to be put on hold while extended observation takes place. Select a topic to explore. Okay, that was very interesting. The Maiden. The Maiden acts as the Sovereign's support mechanism for the Spirit Channeling Ceremony. Each one is granted level 2 authority and an ID crest. A runner subject serves its functions. Providing the Sovereign with the supplemental Dark Astral, it lacks in tandem with the Renis Elma. Okay, that makes sense. Because you need an equal amount of Astral Energy in every element, it makes sense that you would need it in the Dark Astral Energy element as well. During the ceremony, it is partly responsible for astral energy conversion, as well as maintaining stability over the Sovereign's own powers. Additionally, the degree of intimacy between it and the Sovereign has been observed to positively impact the level of stability in both subjects. Because of this, trial activations of the Sovereign without the Maiden present are expressly forbidden. Furthermore, neither the Sovereign nor the Maiden are to be informed about the details of the Spirit Channeling plan. Addendum 1, mental instability in the Maiden has been deemed the cause of the past Sovereign's rampancy. Countermeasures must be considered. Addendum 2. In line, with the plan, uh, in line with plan adjustments, the current subject will have its maiden registration revoked and be returned to its original household. Okay. There are other terminals too? Guess not. Oh, there's this thing. Oh, sedative mask. A device covering the wearer's whole face that restricts the mental activity. It was developed for the purpose of pacifying prisoners. Medical applications are also recognized, particularly as a means of preventing patients from sustaining mental trauma. 
However, doing so is not recommended as prolonged use of the device carries the risk of inducing a number of adverse side effects. And then, due to the loss of production facilities incurred from the partial destruction of Lenigus, additional devices will no longer be manufactured. Okay, and the brainwashing report. After receiving reports of a robust new form of rule emerging in Dana's water realm, a study was commissioned to investigate the matter in depth. This system is unique in that it elevates only the Lord as the supreme authority while relegating both Renans and Danans alike to enslavement. Test subject number 10 1010.5 serves as the realm's current lord and has achieved this without the use of any special powers, drugs, or special devices. Rabbit has done so by sheer governance. Given this method's effectiveness at population control, monitoring of the situation will continue. Addendum 1. Collapse of cognitive facilities via extreme mental repression rooted in violence and fear has proven to be key to this style of rule. Once a subject loses its autonomy, they become desensitized to fear and subsequently cease to prioritize even their own personal safety. Though such a state is ill-suited for commanding officers, it remains an effective way to cultivate disposable infantry and slaves for manual labor. Addendum 2. Soldiers and Linigus who have undergone this treatment will be asked to secure classified sectors as a trial. The results will be monitored. Okay. And there's something here too. Lenigus. A large scale astral energy converter that primarily converts the elemental composition of Dena's astral energy and transmits it to Rena. Activation and control of astral energy conversion is achieved by placing the Sovereign, Maiden, and Rena's armor within the central core of Lenigus. It is a comprised it is a comprised of classified and essential personnel residence zones around a large conduit, along with a defensive layer surrounding them. That's that's a letter too much. This outer layer is deployed upon activation, unlocking the central conduit while simultaneously functioning as the stabilization mechanism. Due to its design, deployment of the outer layer is expected to cause damage to residential zones. However, because that only takes place during the final stage of the spirit journaling ceremony, no contingency plan to address said damage is needed. Until that phase, Lenigus serves as the central base of operations for the management and execution of the Crown Contest on Dana. So essentially, they basically just said in that that the spirit channeling plan is like the final plan, and this whole thing only happens when that comes into play. So essentially, they don't care about the damage to residential zones anymore. Hmm. Warning: Any personnel with level three authority or lower is strictly forbidden from the classified zone. Any violators will be immediately executed. Detachable harvester. A massive spirit vessel placed on Dana for the spirit channeling ceremony. Oh. It serves as the tip of Lenigus's conduit, from which it separates. Upon landing in Danan waters, it extends two sets of conducting pathways. The vertical pathways connect to the center of Dana. Meanwhile, the horizontal pathways proceed to envelop the entire surface of Dana. Once activated, it links to the biological spirit vessels placed in each realm, efficiently harvesting the planet's astral energy en masse. Accumulated energy is then transmitted to Rena via Lenigus. Because construction and adjustment take place in the Forbidden Zones regulator area, Lenigus's outer layer must be deployed prior to launch. Intended to function semi-autonomously only, maintenance personnel are expected to oh, only maintenance personnel are expected to manually interface with it when necessary. No other personnel is required for it to function. Addendum 1, Detachable Harvester 1 was lost on Dana after exploding due to the rampancy exhibited by the Sovereign. Addendum 2, Detachable Harvester 2's landing point will remain the same as that of the previous model. This is due to the explosion of the previous model, which altered the planetary topography, enabling easier connection to the center of Dana. Hmm. And there's one more here. Master Cores. Master cores are instruments of power containing astral energy that belongs to one of the six elements. Five of these master cores, those with earth, water, fire, wind, and light, are loaned to Renan Lords at the time of the Crown Contest. Only the dark master core is maintained inside the Forbidden Zone until the Renan's armor is ready to be reformed, its existence kept top secret. Underneath the master core's spherical outer layer is a force field crystal used for the purpose of astral energy containment and stabilization. Inside the force field, astral energy is stored in a dormant state. For the duration of their tenor, each lord competes in a crown contest to amass their allotted type of astral energy. 
In the event of an emergency, each Lord may be allowed to withdraw from their respective stock of astral energy as necessary. However, the extent allowed is determined based on their own individual strength. Addendum 1. Design flaws have been discovered in how the Renna's armor materializes. He advised that active master cores may resonate with other master cores located in close proximity and become unstable. Addendum 2. Due to successful regeneration of the Renna's armor, master cores will cease to be deployed and the crown contest will be permanently halted. Ah, interesting. So that's essentially like a really new addendum that just came into play after uh, the whole ceremony creating the Renna's armor happened. Spirit cores. Spirit cores are end terminals used for the collection of astral energy. When embedded in a biological subject, it establishes connections throughout its body. These connections are used to amass astral energy generated from physical activity, which is then emitted from the host body itself. Because this emitted energy is prone to diffuse, the host must be placed within range of a spirit vessel for the energy to be collected. This means that dandons must be employed to harvest the astral energy for the purpose of the crown contest. Given the difficulty in producing them, it is advised that spirit cores be retrieved from host bodies and reused upon their death. Spirit cores can also be embedded in zoogles to control them via astral arts. Addendum, increased physical load on a host body tends to produce increased astral energy emissions. Final confirmation of ideal workload to impose on host bodies without inducing death for maximum astral energy yields is still pending. Right? It'll remain pending forever. Let's go. Still a few more rooms. What's in here? A uh, chest. Three life bottles. How many life bottles do I currently possess? I have 13. Ah, that's fine. Oops, goddammit. A room unchanged over three centuries. It's like time itself is stopped here. Why do you know that, often? It may have been changed drastically in the past three centuries and just now arrived at its original point. Great gel. Okay. You see lots of numbers. Looks like logs of alignment between subjects and Lenigus proper. Okay. Okay. Final phase. There's nothing here. But this also nothing. Right. To do this, I gave you my word that I'd help you return to Dana. The next time you open your eyes, you'll be home. But you... My place is here with my people. I still have a duty to fulfill. I'm sorry for what you've endured. Rena never should have dragged you into this. It's not your burden to bear. But... The mask contains a sedative. It should keep your mind from tearing itself apart any further. Let yourself go to sleep. This should help with the pain. Time to go, Elfin. Farewell. Ayori. His injuries are worse than I thought. Short-term treatment isn't going to cut it. I'll have to switch the healing pod to long-term hibernation mode. The chance of surviving hibernation's less than 10%? And worse, long-term use of the mask carries a high risk of damaging his mind and nervous system. But... Uh, uh, if I don't head back... Lenigus will be nothing but ashes, and this starship along with it. I don't know if I can fulfill my promise to you, Alfin. 
But if... If doing this will grant you even the slightest chance, I have to try. I hope it's enough. Please, live for me, Alfin. <sighs> that vision... It must have been from when Naori helped Alfin escape Lenegas. She sure went above and beyond the call of duty. Even with Lenegas crumbling down around her, she chose to stay put with her people. So that's why you lost your memories and sense of pain, and why you were asleep for that whole time. It was all the result of one agonizing decision Naori made to save your life. Yeah. If it weren't for her, I wouldn't even be alive today. I owe her everything. More than I could ever hope to repay. Now that you know how she felt, how do you plan on honoring her wishes? She kept her promise. If the Renan people she fought so desperately to protect are at risk from a malevolent force, then I owe it to her to carry on her fight. Naori was the one who put that mask on me and made me Iron Mask. That's true. She did it to prevent your soul from tearing itself apart. Possible. She knew you might lose your memories and sense of pain as a result. But more than anything, she wanted you to survive. And you did. More transferring. Live here. That's a big room. Let me go in here first. Small chest. Probably nothing too important. An orange gel maybe? I'd be happy with that. A heavy treat. A bit worse than an orange gel, but I'll definitely take it. Could have been worse. And there's nothing in here. Hi. Let's go through this door then. Place. We've seen this in one of Naori's memories. All oh, right, that's where the spirit channeling ceremony takes place. After three hundred years, this is where it was held, the spirit channeling ceremony. This is where the Renis Alma was. So this is the place where you and Naori... The Renis Alma isn't here now. Nor is the Red Woman, it seems. I know it's difficult, Alfin, but there will be time to dwell on the past later. For now, we need to keep moving. Come on. What is this? Is it the work of Dana's will again? It's been a year since the ceremony. That day, I shut away inside of myself the power that caused Elfin to lose control. Since then, my visions of the future have grown more and more fearsome. Is this another memory? No, it's different this time. It's like she's speaking directly to us. <sighs> What we did back then. Not so much as a day passes when I don't think about it. About what was done to us. All in the name of a ceremony. The purpose of which we were never even told. As Sovereign, they linked Elfin's consciousness to Lenigus itself. 
The Renis Alma was intended to control his power, lest anything should slip through its cracks. That day, as Maiden, my role was to temper his power. I was meant to guide it forth, and give shape to the strength inside of him. Linked to Lenicus itself? But then, everything that's been happening... But that power showed me a vision. A vision of Oblivion. When I realized that vision was a prophecy of the apocalypse we were about to unleash, I couldn't go through with it. But without a maiden, the ceremony was doomed. Alfin lashed out, his consciousness no longer his own. I did what I could. Using my abilities as the maiden, I tried to seal that power away inside of me. But it was too late. Lanagus had already been brought to its knees. Thousands upon thousands of lives so cruelly snuffed out. All because of me. Because of what I had done. With the destructive force now slumbering inside of me, I knew I had to find a way to dispose of it. Anything to make up for my failure. But I didn't know how. Especially since that power was astral energy itself. In which case, ironically enough, the Renis Alma seemed to be my best bet. That, at least, would hold the astral energy dormant. Assuming that no malevolent third party got to it first. With the Sovereign and Maiden's combined power, Perhaps I could shift the chaotic energy inside me into the Renis Alma instead. That's what I hoped, but alas, it was not to be. The Renis Alma was lost, and Alfin the Sovereign was in a starship bound for Dana. My only choice was to seal away the destructive force inside of me using my powers as the Maiden, to buy the world what little time I could. The time needed for a new Renis Alma to be crafted, and for a new Sovereign to appear. Even if by doing so, it meant I would be passing the curse onto my descendants as well. Please, forgive me. I never meant to burden the future world with this threat, too. I only wish that there was something more I could have done. Wait, you can't just... She can. Naori. <sighs> that message just now, was it directly from Naori? Or... Was it the Danon voice speaking through her? Uh, what? These are the clothes that Naori and I wore during the ceremony three centuries ago. So you're really saying nice this dress. is the Maiden's outfit? That's right. These clothes are designed to resonate with the Sovereign and Maiden's abilities. They focus and enhance them. And they appeared now because... Naori must have left them here for the new Sovereign and Maiden, knowing the day would come when they would need them in their fight against the Thorns. These outfits are directly linked to the answers we've been chasing this whole time. If they're here, it must mean it was Naori's will for us to find those answers as well. Locating the Renis Alma would allow us to neutralize the dark astral energy inside Xion, thereby silencing her thorns. Is that what Naori's suggesting? It makes sense. After all, Master Cores and Spirit Vessels are both able to prevent the astral energy inside them from developing sentience. By that logic, 
It would stand to reason that the Renis Alma would have the same ability on a larger scale. We have a Maiden and Sovereign. Now all we need is the Renis Alma, and we'll finally be able to free you of your thorns. Shion. It's possible? You really think so? I do. We can rid you of your thorns and stop the world from falling to oblivion. However, the spirit channeling ceremony already failed once. Even if our goal is different this time, we can't be sure the same thing won't happen again. We should take care not to be too optimistic. You're right. It's the barest sliver of a chance. But if there's even the slightest hope it can work, I'm willing to stake everything I've got on it. I... I know it's too early to let myself feel relieved, but... I just can't seem to help it. Just hearing there's the slightest chance, even though I know the world's still in great peril. It's selfish of me, I know, but... but still... No, it isn't! You found hope to believe in. It'd be strange if you weren't over the moon about it. Rinwell's right. We can rid you of your curse and still save the world at the same time. Thank you. Naori entrusted us with the fate of all humanity. Now, it's up to us to prove that trust was well placed. Starting with a little game called Hunt the Renis Alma. <laughs> yeah, we've come all this way. Now we just need to search Lenigus and Rena until we find it. Yeah, we can protect the world and save Xion at the same time. I too shall lend my services. My knowledge of Renan lore is bound to be a useful asset. And they say modesty is dead. <laughs> Miracles just seem to follow wherever you go, huh? Every time. How do you know it's me they're following? We're all in this together, Xion. You included. Now let's get moving, shall we? Last I heard, we had an apocalypse to stop. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Naori. So Naori sealed away the power that made me lose control of myself. She stopped my rampage, and saved my life. But then, that power she'd sealed away was passed down to you. I'm so sorry, Xion. It's my fault that you're cursed. You're wrong. What happened to you was because of the ceremony, and Naori's attempt to stop Oblivion. You paid a heavy price for it, and then fell asleep for 300 years. The reason you lost your memories... ...is the reason for your curse. The, the thorns. thorns. It all leads back to them. But once they're gone, we can finally put an end to all this. When my thorns are gone, I never dared to dream that such a thing could be possible. No, the truth is, I think maybe I've always been dreaming about a life without my thorns. The touch of my family, or playing with my friends, holding hands with Rinwell, or giving Law a deserved smack. Embracing everyone, all the normal things that people do together. I always wished I could experience them for myself and finally know what they were like. Is it really okay for me to believe it can happen? I'm so scared of getting my hopes up. What if it doesn't work out in the end and... That's not going to happen. I'm here to make sure it won't. Forget fate or destiny or anything else. We're going to live. <sighs> A normal life. There are a lot of things you still want to do, right? Yeah. You're right. It's such a strange feeling. I know that we've still got plenty of fighting up ahead. And it's for my sake. So I can live. You're worth fighting for. I believe you, Alfin. Good. I'll keep on fighting. For as long as it takes. Until our future. It's finally in our hands. Oh. Shion, latest maiden. 
by the way, if you want to hear fantastic voice acting, go and watch back that whole sequence with Naori. That was great. Really listen to the voice and listen to what exactly she's doing. CP restoration when full. Does revitalize do an advanced healing arts that restores all allies HP, but it costs 80 CP. Oof, that's expensive. Sodeo Arthalis. A sword given to the chosen sovereign that draws out all of their latent power so as to carry out the spirit channeling ceremony. Garmertalis. Ceremonial garb given to the chosen sovereign, granting them the endurance to withstand the immense power of the spirit channeling ceremony. Las Fiarkis, ceremonial garb given to the chosen maiden capable of interfering with astral energy. It's worn to contain the sovereign's power. Sounds like this Naori chick had quite the big heart. Her position demanded nothing less, from the sound of things. She didn't focus on differences, least of all those between Renans and Danans. Yeah, it was Naori who first showed me that such a thing was even possible. And then she saved my life by sending me back home to Dana. Not only that, but she willingly stayed behind on Lenigus for the sake of her people. It sounds like she was quite the hero, all right. A truly caring person. That's as if walls meant nothing to her. The ones separating the Renans from the Danans, or herself from others. She had no need for them. Which basically meant that she never had anything to break down in the first place, huh? Yeah, I think you may be right about that. You inherited that legacy. Her wish for the world. Don't I know it? She's kind of like a lodestar guiding our way. Showing us what we can aspire to. Let me check. Well, that's a nice picture. Yeah, it's got to equip now. And it is an improvement. It also looks pretty nice. I'm not sure of the blade going back that far fast to handle, but yeah. And the equipment as well, a big improvement, and of course hers too. Right, so which direction are we going north? Here. Uh where oh there's the door. Anyone else in here? Probably not. Anything in here other than just that transfer pod? No. Warp room. Nothing else in here either. Right, at this point, let me just do a quick save. Just in case. I don't know what we're getting ourselves into here. That's quite some door, all right. This might finally be it. The heart of the beast. We'll find the Renis Alma and the Red Woman inside, right? After everything we've been through to get here, they damn well better be. We'll probably be needing you to open this one for us, Sovereign. Go for it, Alfin. This is it, guys. Time to see what secrets are in store. Hmm. We're a long way from the residential quarters now. It looks completely different. Yeah, you're right. Actually, this place... It reminds me more of being back inside the Wedge. Except the Danon astral energy feels even stronger here. In a portion of the city reserved purely for the Renan Sovereign. Maybe he just has strange tastes? This place looks like it has been here for quite some time now. If its design were a matter of personal preference, we would be talking from centuries ago. Or perhaps even further back. Still, 
This isn't the sort of decadence of taste spoken of in artistic circles. So what is it, then? Hold up. Decadence? Artistic circles? When a preference is indulged to its extreme, it descends into kitsch, eccentricity for the sake of it. I'd be happy to illuminate you further. That depends. Does it involve you buying me lunch? The void that art fills isn't the stomach. It's the soul. In that case, I'll let you know the next time my soul starts to rumble. Now all we need is something to fill up the void inside your head. Shut up! All right, and there's our healing point. So that's now the cue for us to save. Although I probably should do a quick check of the skill panel to see if there's anything, but with 500, I doubt it. Although, almost a thousand for Rindle? Maybe there's something? Ah, almost a thousand. Yeah, she's missing one SP from a boost of plus 50 for elemental defense. Well, we'll just leave it as is then. Off we go.